Today we're going to talk about community structure or how living things interact in their community. And we have already briefly been discussing the difference between a community and an ecosystem. And this was something we touched on the first week of the school year. But to remind you, a community is all of the biotic factors in an environment, whereas an ecosystem includes the biotic and the abiotic. So communities are just living, ecosystems include living and non-living. Everything living in a community occupies a niche, which is the sum of all activities and relationships by which a species obtains and uses resources. I like to think of a niche as a job or what you do on a daily basis. So everything living has to eat um, or produce food if you're an autotroph, but what are you eating? How are you getting it? Where do you live? Do you live with anybody? Um, do you interact with a lot of organisms or are you a solitary organism? All of these things would make up your niche your day-to-day -day activities. What happens when two or more niches overlap? And this is extremely common. When two or more niches overlap, we end up with competition. Organisms are going to compete for whatever, whatever it is that they are overlapping in. Oftentimes it's food, it could be territory. Um, if we're talking about members of the same species, it could be for a mate. And we can look at different types of competition, and there are two types. Interspecific competition is when two or more different species are competing for the same limited resource. And again, this is because of a niche overlap. So plants are going to be competing for things like sunlight, water, soil, you could talk about carbon dioxide. Um, anything that the organism needs to survive, um, chances are they're going to be competing for. What will plants do in order to get more sunlight? Well, they can grow taller to try and outcompete their competitors. In terms of water and access to soil, uh, roots or root depth in particular, how deep do the roots grow or do they grow very wide from the uh, base of the plant? Uh, these are ways that organisms can attempt to outcompete their competitors. And we'll talk about this in more detail when we get to the next unit or later units, um, adaptations, things organisms can do or traits they possess um, in order to be more successful in their given environment. But interspecific competition is between two or more different species. Whereas intraspecific competition is competition amongst members of the same species. So a classic, a classic example would be competition for a mate or females in the case of the peacock here. Uh, peacocks are very pretty, very fancy. <coughs> And that is in order to attract a female. Peacocks are the male, peahens are the females. Um, males within that species are competing for females. Um, there are so many examples of how the male uh, members of a species are much more colorful, much more elaborate, um, and that is strictly for attracting a female. It's strictly for competing with other males of that same species. Um, so intra would be competition amongst members of the same species. <clears throat> and what happens if you can't compete? Well, you are excluded. You lose. You are no longer able to compete in that given environment, so you're, you're done. You're gone. Um, worst case scenario, you could say extinction. Um, and usually that's a result of a sudden change in the environment that doesn't allow the organism a chance to adapt. Um, but it could also be they just aren't well suited for the environment and so they, they either have to go somewhere else or they die out. Um, so competitive exclusion when one species is eliminated because of competition. And it's because they are un unable to compete or outcompete competitors for that limited resource. 
So if you can't grow taller or your roots can't get enough water, you're not going to do well in that environment and you're going to die off. So you will no longer be found in that given environment. So competitive exclusion is worst case scenario. Okay, a way that organisms can share potential um, overlap of resources is called resource partitioning when two or more species share a given limited resource. So in this example, um, the various species of warblers share the same shelter or where they build their nests um, in these particular coniferous trees. So the birds have learned to share the resource by building their nests in different locations. Okay, so these guys right here prefer to build their nests in the top of the tree. Okay, these guys build them in the middle and these guys build them in the bottom. And if let's say this bird right here were to build its nest in the top, well then you're going to be fighting with these guys over here and both are going to be less successful. So it's to the benefit of all species to build their nests in different locations to eliminate the competition and therefore all parties involved um, are benefiting. Uh, so this is actually considered a behavioral adaptation. It's something that organisms are doing to better survive in their environment. If this tree is a limited resource, organisms are going to have to share it in order to be successful. If they don't, then all are going to suffer. Okay, so behavioral adaptation, sharing a limited resource. If we look at some specific types of relationships within a community. <clears throat> Symbiosis is the general term we give to any close relationship and there's a few types that we'll look at. The first being commensalism, which is a relationship where one organism is helped while the other one is unaffected. So in this example, you've got the buffalo and the cowbird. The cowbird is going to benefit from this relationship in that the buffalo will uncover the hiding places of insects as it just rumbles around um, where it's living. So it's going to knock over the hiding places of insects um, and the birds are going to benefit from that because they don't have to spend the energy hunting for the insects or, or rooting around for them. So the birds benefit, they don't have to work as hard for food, the buffalo are completely unaffected. They could care less that the birds are there. They're not hurt by the birds. Commensalism. <clears throat> Mutualism, when both members benefit. <clears throat> um, plants and their pollinators are the classic example. Um, the bees, in this example, the pollinator, benefits by getting food. The plant is producing nectar uh, to help lure the bee to the plant. So the bee gets food, the plant will end up getting pollinated. The bee picks up pollen when it lands, flies to another plant, drops off the pollen, and helps the plant to essentially reproduce. So when both members benefit, we call that mutualism, plants and their pollinators. Parasitism is when one organism is helped while the other is harmed. <clears throat> So for example, a tapeworm inside of you, the tapeworm is stealing your nutrients. So it's getting food from you, whereas you are going to end up malnourished, you're going to lose weight, you are going to be harmed. A lot of parasites use their host to lay eggs or as a um, vessel to help them reproduce to the expense or at the expense of the host or the organism that is harmed. We call the host the organism that ends up being harmed. Predation is when one organism kills and eats the other. So a predator and prey relationship. So typically we see this with carnivores, omnivores that eat both plants and animals. Um, the example shown being the lynx and the hare, a classically studied example of predator-prey predator relationships. <clears throat> 